Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. I'm Derek Smith and this is Pop-Up Camper Pro. Today I'm going to show you how to replace the left hand chain drive crank assembly on your Coleman or Fleetwood Pop-Up Camper. Make sure you stay tuned all the way to the end of the video. At the end, we're going to go over some other common problems and issues that you might experience while doing this job. I've done it to the camper and I'll show you what the camper does and what it sounds like when A, B, or C is wrong. And if you're ready, let's get started. This is definitely the issue. But before we fix this, we gotta figure out what tore that to pieces. All right, underneath the camper, uh, I've got it jacked up some. Got my jack stands in. Looking at everything, I don't see anything obviously wrong. What kind of worries me is the previous owner was recently into this. Uh, again, we see new mounting hardware here. We got new mounting hardware on the crank assembly. And they were doing a lot of work. I actually see new subfloor as well above me here at the rear of this unit. Let's get this uh, pan cover off and see what we find in here. Well, the tree looks good. Drill bar feels fine. It's nice and greased up. It's definitely an OEM tree. Um, what I don't like is I got a long wood screw sticking out of the bottom of the floor there. That looks like the bar probably would hit it. But I don't see any indication that it has been hit. We'll definitely snip that. Let's go ahead and take the crank assembly off. Now with the crank assembly out, let's rebuild it. Take it all apart, replace the components that we have to, and get it back on the camper and see if we can get this baby opened up. I do have a complete in-depth tutorial on the rebuild of this assembly. I'll add links in the description below for that. But to start, we'll go ahead and drill these rivets using a drill bit, just slightly larger than the inside of the rivet head you're gonna drill, drill it out. I don't know if that freed it or not. Yep, there you go. Now I did see a lot of grease in this assembly. Could be from the chain being over greased. Maybe the crank assembly was greased, I don't know. But there seems to be a little bit more than I'm comfortable with. Chain, although dirty, is in good shape. It's pliable, it's flexible, everything moves. This chain is fine to reuse. Here's a ratchet ball gear. And there is the clutch pad, which is very greasy. So that's definitely an issue. And we've got grease just caked on the gear. Here's our beveled washer. And we'll replace this drive shaft, driving that pin out. We also want to take a look at the shaft bushing in here. Make sure that the edges are still nice and sharp. We don't have any wear. That looks good on the inside here. So shaft bushing is fine. It's fully seated in the assembly. And the ratchet paw is in good order. All right, let's get this gear off this old drive shaft. I'm giving you a bird's eye view for this next step. When you're driving these pins out, you wanna check both sides of the pin Make sure one's not larger than the other. And, and this is a roll pin. This will come out a lot easier than a shear pin will. But this one's not directional. Both sides are the same size. So I'm going to clamp it in a vise. Get it good and tight. Bump it closed. And drive it out with a good quality punch 
and a heavy hammer. Do not try to use a claw hammer, even a framing hammer. This is a heavier hammer, but this would still be a chore if it would do it driving this pin out. To make it even a little easier, we can use a lubricant. Chemical penetrant, spray the part. Your punch wants to be a little bit smaller than the hole, but to capture both sides of the pin. And to extract it fully, you're gonna to wanna to switch to a long throat punch next. See, big hammer, easy job. When you get that far, you don't wanna drive it anymore or you, uh, you set your punch into the hole. Here at this step, it's a good time to take a good hard look at all the parts you're gonna reuse. We're not reusing that. And we're not reusing that either. Dear Lord. We'll be able to reuse this. Definitely needs cleaned up, but all the teeth look fine. The side of it looks good. That's definitely usable. No groove right there. The ratchet ball gear, ugh, that's seen better days. Uh, we're definitely got some grooves in this. We're gonna get rid of that. And the beveled washer is just fine. All right, parts are all cleaned up. Got a new drive shaft. Goes on like this. Line up the hole, get it in the vise. And since this pin is all bent up, we'll replace it by stacking two one inch 3 16 pins. Just get her started. Try not to smash my fingers. And use a larger punch. Send it home. And repeat for the opposite side. Clutch pad goes on. Ratchet ball gear goes like that. The beveled washer goes with the bevel side out. That's gonna sit in this cup. Roll the ratchet ball back. Chain goes back on and back plate. For reassembly, the chain is gonna pass on this side, so the ratchet ball bolt is gonna to point towards the 12 tooth gear. Put your chain over your gear. And get your crank in position. My camera had just glitched out on that last step there. Lost a little content. Luckily it was just putting those bolts in. It like locked up, I had to reboot it. I was like, oh no. <laughs> It'd be horrible to get this far and then lose all the content. Technology, right? For the drive hub, we got our 5681 kit. So spring goes in first. Nylon spacer and the flat washers. Use a crank handle to keep everything in place when you install the tube. All right, next we want to bind the system. And make sure that tube is on tight. <clears throat> it's tight. And now install our fine thread nut on this one. There it goes.
I got that screw cut out of there. I didn't film that because chances of you ever having to do that are probably slim to none. We'll go ahead and get some extra grease on this tree just for good measure. And on the bottom of the pan that I just cleaned off. All right, pan cover's back on and it's time to test the system. The um, camera was starting to glitch out again. I think it's getting hot. Cover's back on. Drive hub's on. Let's give it a shot. Oh yeah, that feels great. Roof is going up. But since we're at such an angle with the jacks and everything, we don't want to raise it too far. Let's get it down, uh, get that nut lock tighted in and open this thing up, take a look inside of it. A little bit of medium strength Loctite. I got a brace underneath the drive hub. And I'm sorry, my arm's gonna be in the way there. Just uh, sending the pin home. With drive hub pins, you can use a framing hammer. All right, let's go over some problems you might run into doing this job. The first one is going to be the chain drive gear not spaced properly. So when you're replacing components in this crank assembly, you wanna make sure that it ends up being that the gear is back in line so the chain doesn't bind when the system's going up, or more importantly, when it's coming down. So after you replace your drive shaft, check for play, forward or back. If you have some, eliminate it. You can use a fender washer behind the chain drive gear to take up the slack. If you install it with the gears out of alignment, you'll feel binding and you'll hear clunking, typically as the roof comes down. It's gonna look and sound like this. The next issue you may have is chain length. We have half links and new master links available to help you change the chain length if required. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe and smash that notification bell, and I will see you guys at the campground.